the recording. All right. So here we are, the Board of Health meeting of October 16th, and we're all here, namely myself, Catherine Hilton, Arlene Reed, Wim Levine, Noreen Pease, and Garrett Simonson. And first order of business, as always, is the minutes. Are they okay? Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. I will I will disseminate them. Um we have we have two disposal works construction permits. One is for 70 Shore Drive, and the other is for 564 West Pelham Road. They are both um they're both repairs. Um 564 West Pelham Road is requesting a local local upgrade approval for looks like a reduction um, in separation to high groundwater. Um, it's got what does that mean then? It says three feet of naturally occurring perkable soil, not four feet before ledge encountered. So they're asking for a one one foot reduction in the um, the separation to groundwater. And Claudia has has um, recommended approval of both these systems. Any discussion or question or comment? We're just talking about the one now, Kat. Well, let's, yeah, let's talk about that one, 564 West Pelham Road that's okay. doing um, a local upgrade approval for um, a one foot reduction in the um, this distance to groundwater. Do you know if their well ahead is downgrade from that? Let me have a look. And see if see if I can tell that from the plan. <clears throat> I can't tell by this if it's down gradient, but it's quite far away. Mm -hmm. It's about it's a good hundred feet. With the house in between, yeah. the, um, the new leach field and the well. Good. Does Kat does Claudia comment at all about the local upgrade other than recommending approval? Does she discuss why it is not a concern on her part? Um, in this case, at least she. She did not. She did not. Okay. Um, and she usually doesn't. Um, you know, these are pretty routine. Yeah. Right. So it's not really okay. considered a cause for concern. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and recommend approval. I'll second. Okay. Nope. Okay. All in favor, Arlene? Yes. Wim? Yes. Noreen? Yes. Garrett? Yes. Cat? yes. Okay, so that's 564 West Pelham Road. Now over on 70 Lake Drive, I do not think that there is a local upgrade here. Did you say Lake Drive or I, earlier, did you say Shore Drive? I wrote down Shore Drive, but maybe yeah, I, I think it's Shore. Drive. It is Shore Drive. It is it's Shore Drive. Okay. I said Lake, and that was not right. And who who is seventy Shore Drive? Cal? Walter Tarati. Oh, okay. But it appears I was going to look at this in in the records. It appears that Walter and Lori may be living in a different place on Watson Straits because it seems like Benjamin Tarati, who I assume must be their son, um, is in this place. However, it's Walter that's taking out the permit. So, you know, it's that place. Okay. We know. So this one is pretty, um, pretty
pretty straightforward. As far as I know, there are not, there's not a local upgrade. Okay. And has Claudia reviewed it? She has, and she recommends it. Okay. So then I move that we approve signing the permit. And I hear a, a second. Second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, let's vote. Arlene? Yes. Wim? Yes. Noreen? Yes. Garrett? Yes. And Kat, yes. Okay, so we will do that. And if you will excuse me for a half second, my timer is calling me. So did I send you did I send you the letter from the not weed people? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um I I don't know if we really need to talk about it. I mean it's just the fact that I wanted to get on the record that we have received it and everybody mm -hmm. has had the chance to see it. It seems to me that we aren't specially being asked to do anything, and I'm I'm not sure it's really in our in our purview to do anything about it. Um, after our meeting last time, I ran into Becky and she told me that Rita wants to know, wanted to know our opinion, I guess. And I told her that we had not taken a, a position. And uh, by me, it can stay that way. Um, so that's really all I think we have to say about it. But if anybody has any comments about it, please, uh, please go ahead and make them. Okay, hearing none. Uh, I, I just have a question and we may not be able to answer it, but I, I assume that no spraying took place this summer? That's correct. At okay. least as far as I know, it's correct. Yeah, there, there's one of the patches that it, it's um on Pelham Hill Road right before the Shoot Spray Pelham town line as you're heading toward Pelham and it's on the right. Um, there are a couple of big big stands um, mm -hmm. and I was biking by it the other day and one of them looked like, one of them looked dramatically different from the other, like something had happened to it. It was all brown and had dropped most of its leaves, whereas the other patch was still quite green and flourishing. Was it so, a whole patch that was like that? Yeah, I mean, I didn't stop and inspect it. I sort of noted it quickly as I was going by um, I'd have to take a closer look to really confirm all that. But anyway, that, it that looked like the, somebody had been doing something. That was the control patch after they sprayed the Roundup on the other one. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, I don't know. Maybe they did spray it. Well, maybe. Didn't, when, when yeah. she gave us her little presentation, mm -hmm. it sounded like they were going to go ahead this fall and treat because that was the question and they said yes fall is the time yeah it is the time but the the person who was going to <clears throat> uh be certified or in his case recertified as a sprayer was steve sullivan who has resigned from his position with the highway department oh so um he's not Spraying. Or whether they're they've designated someone else in the department to go get certified, or but I think that was a wrench that got thrown into that, those works. Got it. Right. Well, when how long ago was it that Steve resigned? I mean, possibly this is something that happened just a couple of few, maybe three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. like that. Three or so weeks ago. I don't know. I got I got the impression. I mean, I, sh I shouldn't have said so quickly before. No, spraying hasn't been done because I don't actually know that. But I got the impression that it was still kind of an, an open question and there were all kinds of things to be solved. And they were waiting on 
um, some kind of ruling from the Conservation Commission and uh, I don't know what all else. So I have no idea really. Yeah. What's going on? So one of the things on the agenda, oh, I'm sorry, was there anything more to say about this not weed thing? Anybody? Mm. Okay. Let's go on. One of the things I put on the agenda was about the the vaccination clinic, which is on Friday, October 25th. It goes from 3.30 to 6.30. I asked Sarah to check on the enrollment because they said if, you, if we didn't have 25 people pre-registered, they would cancel the clinic. Um, so I asked Sarah to find out and she found out that 68 people had signed up. And that, oh, was, like a week, that was like a week ago. Wow. So, and so now I put out another thing saying, if you're having trouble, because a few people are, um, just get in touch with Sarah and she'll help you do it. Basically, she'll do it for you um, by phone. So she told me that um, she can't stay to the end of it. And Katie Harrington, the school nurse, can't stay to the end of it either. And she's gotten... Kristen to come at 6.30 and lock, or whenever, and lock the doors because apparently nobody from the school, I guess the school custodian can't stay that long either. Um, mm. So I told her that that um, some one or more of us would be on site just because it doesn't seem right to me that there would be something going on in the in the school and there wouldn't be some person from the town um there just being responsible so yeah. um so um we i'm to happy to do it because i can also i mean I, I do they have timed appointments yes oh yeah that's too bad because with two people doing injections they could plow through faster right I don't know how many people they have doing injections. I don't know anything about it, really. Yeah, no, I mean, I could do that. Uh huh. Well, you know, you can always you can always offer if you're if you. Yeah, there. I'm happy to do it. Mm -hmm. They may not have you vaccinate because I, I think it they hired a state vendor for mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. so the uh, vaccinators are paid for by the state. Got it. Um, I'm not available that Friday, so can't commit to it. I don't think I have, I don't think I have anything planned, but I, I'm happy to, I'm happy to go there. Okay, great. I'll remind you and, and, um, if possible, I'll go as well. And anybody else wants to just comment. Yeah. See I am you. one of the people registered for the, and I meant to receive mine at four. 20 mm -hmm. and i can stay afterward as well and i'd be happy to do so yeah and i i'm also registered to get my vaccine about the same time 410 i think i am oh okay. yeah. Th those are really good numbers i was on a call today where uh public health nurses were saying that they're not seeing uh signups for their flu clinics hmm. in the Interesting. weeks too so I don't I don't know I don't know how many people have signed up for flu and how many people have signed up for um um covid. Oh or, right. You know or if people are getting both or what. I I don't have any numbers on that. <clears throat> I just wanted, you know, the raw number to make sure it was going to happen. So another Non-update I can give you is that um, um, we're coming up on the expiration of our demolition order for 56 Wendell Road. Right. And I haven't seen or heard anything. I sent a text a couple of days ago asking for an update and I haven't heard anything. So I don't know. I'll see what I can find out. Mm -hmm. Can can we renew it or what what would happen next, Kat? Well, you know, it's our order. It seems to me we can do anything we want, right? Um, but we need to see some 
progress, you know? Yeah. Or something. When I spoke to to Greg in person, he said he had he had a demolition company on the line and they were prepared to to um uh get to work at some point in October and they didn't need um power hookup and they didn't need uh running water as long as water could be supplied in a in a carboy or something. Um but I haven't seen anything and as I said I haven't heard back. I assumed that this meant that we were going to mediation and to a court process because we had ordered the demolition cat. Well, we gave him till we gave him 90 days, I think. Oh, we did. Okay. And so we have to wait till those 90 days are up. And uh, that's end of October. Is that right? It is right. I don't have the exact date in right. front of me, but it's roughly end of October. So we would be yeah. taking that up at our first meeting in November. Okay. Right. And I don't really know what the procedure is for even getting into mediation. If anybody knows that, please. I'm sorry, can you say that again? I, I, You don't know the procedure what? For getting into mediation. I just don't know how that, I don't know how, how we would address ourselves to that. Well, be... it, it seems to me that town council would need to be involved at that point. Right. And I feel like I recall something about that Donna had said that it would have to go through the housing court. That Donna McNichol said that. Yeah. Is that right, Kat? I'm my, sorry, I missed it. My my recollection was that Donna McNichol said that it would have to go through the housing court. I think you're right. I think you're right. So well, it maybe, see, seems yeah. like we should research it for the next meeting and find out if we need to reissue that out order or what steps we need to take next to make sure right. this keeps moving along. <laughs> keeps moving along. Well, indeed. as if it's been moving along at all. I but know. <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah, you you um, about that. We absolutely yeah, and to hear from Donna McNichol, like what what are next steps? Are there any that we need to do, or is it out of our hands at that point? And right into hers or hoops. Right. Yeah. Um, it turned out, I mean, we've talked about this before. It turned out to be a lot more complicated than I had imagined. Some guy, some guy called us several times. Um, who is um, a certified receiver. And he would like the job of being the receiver for this property. And I said, well, send me everything, you know, send me the information, but you know, you should know we're hoping to avoid that as a yeah. Let's an option. I don't know if the question is best directed to Donna McNichol, but um I think we need to be we need to get really clear about what our role is in any next steps. What are the procedures to follow mm -hmm. and uh, who, who takes those steps? Is it, is it us? Is it town council? Is it select board? It could be, yeah, it could be yeah select board. Right. Or is it um, uh, our agent who works on this um, in combination with town council or, I think we need to get really clear about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did ask Donna about it, and she asked a bunch of questions that were just so shocking that I, I kind of backed off and didn't know what to think. But I will ask her um, more about it, and I'll also ask Claudia because I mean Claudia yeah. dealt with this probably up close, sure. personal. No doubt she has. Yeah, and also I will. I will let the owner know that um, that this is what we're talking about. We're talking about mediation that would have to go through housing court, and we would, which would mean we would have to take him to court. And that might put the fear of God into him. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that he told me was that apparently, apparently he's still in negotiation with the insurance company. Um, 
and he <laughs> is also preparing some other property that he owns for sale to basically cover the cost of this while the while the insurance negotiation goes on. So there's a whole other layer of of um, stuff that's going on and that doesn't that doesn't cut any ice. I realize that, but I just wanted to yeah that out that is it's part of the, the whole picture here. But this has been what yeah. five, seven years since mm -hmm. the damage was done. I mean yeah, come on. I think it's five, but I'm not eight, sure. At least five for sure. Yeah. 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 No, I'm not trying to make excuses. I just wanted to let you know what one that there's another issue in it. Yeah. So I'll see what I can find out and share it with you when the time comes. Um, I went to a district meeting today. Um, it was it was pretty much uneventful. Claudia told me that that what I sort of knew was there's an awful lot of septic activity going on in town, including new construction. There's several places where lots are being created out of you know people's back lot and whatnot and so there's uh, there's a surprising amount of new construction given given the state of the economy and stuff so it's just a a little factoid how about other things does anybody have anything to report about uh, i don't know the the collaborative or any other any other thing we belong to? Um, last meeting, I volunteered to uh, talk to Kristen and Lenny about uh, what their experience had been, if, if there's any data at all on what the incidents might be of uh, drug, illegal drug use in town. And I talked to Lenny, and I haven't talked to Kristen yet. She hasn't returned my call. But he said they, the fire department has had no responses requiring Narcan or, um, you know, any incidents since he's been fire chief. So he says for, you know, a couple of years. Uh, before that, he recalled that there were a, a few incidents. So I then asked him, you know, told him about the opioid money and, asked him if he had any ideas about, um, you know, best use of those funds. Um, and one thing he said was he could use, and we might be able to get this through the collaborative, maybe Garrett can chime in here. Um, he could use some more Narcan mm -hmm. um, that his supply, he, you know, didn't have much left. And uh, I could look at my notes, but I think it's about $100 for two, for two canisters. He, he looked it up. So it's um, not inexpensive to purchase it. Um, um, so that was Noreen, one thing. Noreen, Noreen can I, yes, can I sure. jump in here? Um, if he hasn't had any calls for using Narcan, how come he's... I don't know. Maybe it expires. Yeah. Does anybody know? Oh, well, maybe so. Yeah. So. I'm sure it has an expiration date. Everything does. Yep. Well, that seems like a good use, good use of of funds. Yeah, and I think mm -hmm. it's probably yeah. in our budget and the collaborative. So it may be that we could get some through the collaborative. It's a mm -hmm. question we can raise at the next at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing, I asked him if uh, he thought you know educational programs for young people would be um, helpful. And you know, the thing he said that he thought was of greatest concern to him was. He sees, I'm not sure exactly how to phrase it, but not necessarily drug misuse, but lots of seniors who are on pain medications, not really understanding how to use them and perhaps um, getting into some difficulty with um, mm. use, overdose of or, or using too much pain medication and yeah. not knowing how to handle that. And then he was suggesting that perhaps some education around that might be useful. Hmm. Anybody else have any comments or hmm. no? I mean, that seemed to make some sense to me. He said people who are 
you know, dealing with chronic debilitating kinds of con- yeah. conditions and, or cancer, um, sometimes don't really, um, understand completely, um, I guess this, the strength and the, uh, you know, the, the toll that some of these medications can take on, on you over a series of months or years or however long you're using them. Mm-hmm. That sounds like something that Sarah could do. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. Program. So related to the settlement funds, um, we do have a reporting deadline. Shoot story has a report reporting deadline on that. And I, uh, saw, um, town administrator last week mentioned it to her again, and I'm supposed to give her a call tomorrow to remind her one more time to, uh, finalize the, um, reporting on that. She said that no funds have been spent as of yet. And I reminded her that we had received approval from the select board to pool those funds with the collaborative. Um, but in talking with Greenfield, it sounds like we're maybe the only community that did that. I don't know if they talked about that at the last meeting, Noreen, if they've, um, I unfortunately didn't go to the last meeting and there was not a quorum. So there were only two people that attended that meeting, unfortunately. So, um, so I'll, I'll talk, um, with Becky tomorrow to re-remind her on the, um, reporting. And then I guess for the next meeting, they'll probably carry that agenda item over. Cause I think they were going to talk about the pooling issue. Yeah. Is that reporting something that we could do or does it have to come from Becky or from, I mean, how does that work? I think she has all of the credential information for it, but in talking with her and, you know, where she's going to be leaving soon, Mm -hmm. um, I'll ask her if she can provide us with it. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I think that she originated the login. Oh, I see. It's done online. Yeah, it's it's um, an online reporting. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll I'll ask her that question tomorrow. Okay. With the uh, the resupply of Narcan, if if you think it would be useful, um, we stock and distribute quite a bit of it. So um, I can try and find out about. Um, costs of different sources of supply i i don't know if it's a uniform pricing thing or if we could get a deal somewhere but i think lenny was just quoting what his price would be if he bought it through the fire department so and it cost a little more than i think he thought it did so i i can look at it i mean yeah i can try that and I'll report back. Okay, great. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. So did we have anything else that we needed to do? Do you want me to continue to um pers- to uh, see if Kristen has any more input for us? Yeah. I can give her a call again. Yeah, you know, Kristen really gets around and talks to people. And, right. Uh, uh, she's kind of the de facto social worker, so she, exactly. might, she might have some good insight on it. Okay. Oh, can I just ask one other thing? Did he give any indication of how many doses we might be interested in? He did. Look, hold on. Let me grab my notes. I can't remember off the top of my head when, but I've got them right here. I'm finding those different moldings there in, in Noreen's room, kind of mesmerizing. Yeah, and I see Noreen and I both participate from a lounging position. <laughs> <laughs> you guys really know how to take a meeting. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm with friends on the Cape, so I'm in a 
Uh, anyway, uh, he says 10 to 20. I suppose it depends on how they're packaged. I think with what he was looking at in terms of packaging, there were two canisters per package. All right. I don't know where Sarah gets them, but it seems to me that she um, she she has one or two out for people to take. I would think there would might be available through the collaborative. Mm -hmm. You know, that's another thing I think we it was. Oh, here we go. It was one hundred and twelve dollars for a pack of two Wim. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. And they're looking at something like he said 10 to 20 doses. All right. <clears throat> Thanks. Sure. Thank you. So so these these settlement funds, they're not something that we have to spend or we lose them, right? I mean, they can just they just stay there. My understanding was it can accumulate from year to year, mm -hmm. which was part of what the collaborative was thinking about doing, you know, doing some planning and really thinking about, you know, how they might want to use it. So, no, I don't think it reverts. I think mm -hmm. it stays so, in town. So if the collaborative will pay for, for Narcan, that'll be fine. And if not, we can use the exactly. settlement money. Yep. And maybe, well, Sarah's already working for us, but if she wants to, you know, I don't know if she would need to, you know, if we decide to do some sort of workshop for seniors um, around uh, pain, use of pain, safe use of painkillers. Or I don't know what you call it, safe use of narcotics. Someone yeah. help me who's clinically correct. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's really crucial to get it right. Yeah. right okay, second. you've got the right idea. Right. Thank you. But but we're, I I don't I can't imagine seniors taking so many painkillers that they would need Narcan. No, 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 no. Okay. But I think so, again, so those really are two separate things, right? <laughs> no, but I think you know, appropriate pain management, you know, I don't think a lot of physicians really are good educators around those kinds of issues. So apparently not, because look yeah. where we are. Right. Um, all right. I'll mention to Sarah that we would be interested in in have her doing a, um, a a presentation on that. I think Sarah might have her own ideas. It's just, you know, one one thought mm -hmm. right well yeah i'll, men I'll mention yeah. that we would be we would be uh, interested in that she she does have her own ideas and she's been working with leverett but i haven't yet heard what the ideas are yeah okay i will i'll ask her what uh what they're thinking about in leverett okay good <clears throat> i did talk to um John Hillman, you know, from the Leverett board, and he said they'd be happy to, you know, work with us on any, if we wanted to do some sort of joint effort also. Mm -hmm. I know. I mean, but functionally, we're already kind of doing that because it's like exactly. is for right. Leverett and Shootsbury. That's right. Do yeah. we know how well attended her program uh, two weeks ago tonight was <clears throat> on stroke awareness? Do we? I have no idea. I can find out. I, I ask that just because, you know, if she does outreach, whatever outreach she does do to try to pull people into programs, that was one directed at seniors or their caregivers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it might be an indicator of um, the level of response or readiness for people to come to presentations of hers, for, you know, people from that demographic, seniors and their caregivers um right i don't know like if nobody showed up for that stroke awareness program what does that say about how receptive the demographic is to coming to programming yeah know. some i don't know i'll i'll ask her how many shoots fairy people came in person and how many people attended online um and you you may not be able to generalize from one topic to the next right but. Well, she's doing. We we just got information too. She's doing that UTI prevention at the oh, right. uh, 
yeah, coming up. That's so, right. Yeah. 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 And she's doing that. that after the senior luncheon. And I wonder if she would do more things at that time um, or mm. a place. Because I think, yep. I, I don't think that a lot of people from Shootsbury really want to go down to the Leverage Safety Complex. I don't know right, where right. they are, but um, right. I, I went to one thing, it was the tick one. And there were maybe three Shootsbury people and maybe maybe eight Leverett people. It wasn't hugely well attended. Yeah. And, and there were some people online. And I think there were two, there might have been two sessions. So I would think that next year at this time, we could she could be doing these things in our new library. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. and maybe um, maybe we'll get better attendance then. Maybe so. Maybe she and maybe she can circle back and revisit some of these topics. Good idea. Okay, I'll have a I'll have a chat with her and see, and see what's what. Is there anything else we ought to be talking about tonight? I have nothing. All right, I will. Um, so our next meeting, we won't have another meeting now until November. Um, can it be? It'll be after the election? It will be on, let's see, no, November 6th. November 6th, yeah. yeah. Day after the election. Well, we probably won't know anything. Right. Probably not, but it feels like, you know, we get to November 5th and we just fall off a cliff. I can't even imagine life after it, you know, either yeah. good or real. And I'm going to be in North Carolina. <laughs> Oh, for yeah. the election? Well, day of. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, go knock on some doors. Yeah, that's what I'm planning on doing. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so you won't be here for the next meeting, or? Um, I I can probably. It depends. I'm at a wedding. It kind of depends on. I don't know what the schedule is there, but um, I will try and just zoom in. Okay. Okay. And if you can't, we're, we've probably got it covered. Yep. I'll be here. All right. I will reach out to you guys um, uh, closer to the vaccination clinic and just make sure we're all on the same page about, about giving some, some coverage there. That's great. Right. Sounds good. good. Yeah. Okay. I I'm move we adjourn. <laughs> Second. Okay. All in favor? Yeah. Yes. You're here. You're here. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys. Okay. Thank you, Kat. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Bye.